Okay. So let's consider a situation where the government is considering a fractionary fiscal policy. Effectively, what's going to happen is taxes going to go up or government expenditure is going to go down or both is going to happen. Okay, if that happens, what have we learned in equal to a seven? I'm going to go through this very quickly. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, you need to go back to your notes for 207 and revise. So in the short run, if there was going to be a contractionary fiscal policy, we would see that output would fall. Okay. The ice curve would shift to the left, and as a result, Y would fall. In the medium run, what we saw is that if there is a contractionary fiscal policy, uh, there would be a fall in the interest rate, which would lead to uh, high levels of savings and investment. And in the long run, what we saw is that due to this high savings and investment, in the medium run, uh, there would be mm, high capital and as a result, high output, right? So effectively, government is stuck in a, in a difficult situation, see? So in the short run, due to a contractionary fiscal policy, output will fall. If I remember correctly, this was in chapter five. Chapter five. Uh, this was in chapter nine, C9, and this was in C11, if you guys want to go back and revise a little bit. So in the short run, the moment government imposes a contractionary fiscal policy, a put falls. In the long run, over time, we see that output will go up. So the government might see that a contractionary fiscal policy is actually a good thing for the economy and they may want to impose it. But the problem is that in the short run, it's going to sort of push the economy into a recession, unless of course we have, uh, let me draw the diagram for this. So we have Y and R and IS and LM. So this is what the government want to do. Uh, this means that uh, our Y is falling, right? We were here, Y1, now we are here, Y2. And this is, obviously, this is not a good thing. Uh, what can the government do here? I mean, of course, uh, we may have also an expansionary monetary policy, which brings us back to Y1, but this may not always be possible, right? We may be, it may not be possible to lower the interest rate anymore. Uh, we may be stuck in a liquidity trap. There may be a hundred different reasons why it's not advisable to reduce the interest rate even more. So as a result, uh, if the government wants to impose contractionary fiscal policy, there are times when they will have to force the economy into a recession, reduce output. Even though in the long run it's a good thing, in the short run it's a very bad thing for the people. And of course, governments, you know, they depend on the vote. If the government imposes unpopular policy, they won't win the next election. So the government is often very reluctant to impose a contractionary fiscal policy because no one wants taxes to go up and no one wants different government programs to be shut down. So this is an unpopular uh, policy. However, there are some economists who have argued, some economists have argued that a contractionary fiscal policy 
may increase output even in the short run okay and that is what we are going to talk in the rest of this video is that how is it possible that the government imposes a contractionary fiscal policy which necessarily forces the ice curve further left and how might that lead to an increase in y even in the short run okay so let me give you all a very simple example first step uh, there is a contractionary fiscal policy which means that g falls right? and because g falls ice shifts to the left we all know this we know this from 207 but here's the thing people are not dumb in in 207 and in all previous courses we had assumed that people are dumb although I, we may not have used that word our assumption was that people only look at the current period before making their decision but that's not what we do we also look at the future we try to form expectations about what might happen to the economy and we make economic decisions based on our expectations so the government has imposed contractionary fiscal policy if if people expect this to happen, if people expect interest rates to fall in the future, and if people expect output to rise in the future, what might they do? Let me write this down. Our future expected interest rate is going up. Third of all, our future expected output is going up. So now here's the interesting thing. In the current period, Y is falling, but in the future, we expect output to go up. I'm sorry, this is going down. Similarly, in the current period, nothing is happening to the interest rate, but in the future, we expect interest rate to go down. Based on our expectation, what will this do? Let's go back to the equation of the ice right here. What will happen if this goes up and this goes down? Let me write this here. Ice curve is given by y equals to private savings which is y t r expected future y expected future t expected future r plus g okay now because of the contractionary fiscal policy g has fallen okay but what we also expect is this to go up what we also expect is this to go down? What will the effect of that be? This effect shifts IS to the left. We know that. This two effect shifts IS to the right. Because if we expect our future income to go up, of course, we will spend more now. If we expect future interest rates to go down, we will spend more now. As a result, ice will shift to the right. And so there is going to be a struggle between these two. One is shifting ice to the left, one is shifting ice to the right. And so the question is, which will dominate? So without more information, we cannot say which will dominate. But what we can say is that both options are possible. 
So it may be, and here's the interesting thing, uh, completely contrary to what we had learned in equal to 07, y, r, uh, we have is, we have lm, and the government might impose a contractionary fiscal policy, and instead of the ice curve shifting to the left, we might actually see the ice curve shift to the right because of our expectations. Both are possible. Of course, we need to do a bit more analysis on which will take place. And that is what we are going to talk about right now. Is, uh, shifts of bias due to a contractionary fiscal policy, which will happen. One will depend on the credibility uh, of the program. Effectively, the government is imposing a contractionary fiscal policy. And now if people believe in this program, if people believe that this will lead to uh, this, this will lead to an increasing output in the long run. There has to be this faith, this positive expectation from the people. If there is trust in the government to impose a program that will lead to long-term benefit for the, for the economy, then uh, a CFP may lead to a rightward shift of the s -code. However, if it's a government that doesn't really have trust of the people, there is no credibility in the program, people don't expect it to do any good, then it won't happen. Then the ice will shift to the left. Second of all, composition of the program. So it also matters that, so two things are happening, right? Uh, under uh, contractionary fiscal policy, tax is going up, and government expenditure is going down. Now, government expenditure going down might mean some of government's programs are being shut down. Now, if these are wasteful programs where government is just spending money but it's not leading to any benefits, then it might be a good thing to shut it down. However, if these are good programs that people support, people need, then it might be a bad idea to shut them down. Similarly, taxes going up, what are we taxing? If we are taxing, let's say, luxury foods or harmful foods, let's say we impose a tax on Coca-Cola, that's bad for us health-wise. That won't harm the economy. However, if we put tax on education, well, that's a bad thing. We are discouraging people to go to school, and in the long run, output may not go up, output may fall. So the composition of the program, exactly how we are increasing tax, exactly how we are reducing government expenditure, will have an effect on on whether the ice curve shift to the left or the right. Third point, uh, the state of the budget. So contractionary fiscal policy means that the government is trying to reduce its budget deficit. How big is the deficit? Is there a huge deficit or is there a small deficit? Will the program reduce most of the deficit or will it reduce only part of the deficit, small part of it? That will also affect our expectation and as a result will dictate which way the ice curve shifts. And of course, uh, there is monetary and other policies. As we have seen in, uh, in this diagram, for example, is that monetary policy and other policies can be used to sort of counterbalance the effects of a contractionary fiscal policy. And once again, people are not dumb, they form expectations. So if people see that government is imposing a contractionary fiscal policy, but at the same time, they're also imposing an expansionary monetary policy, that will improve expectations. And as a result, the ice curve may not shift to the left, it may shift to the right. 
Okay, so that's it for this chapter. Uh, let me sum up really quickly. So previous chapter, we learned that consumption and investment depends on expectation. In this chapter, we're trying to learn how. How will expectation affect our consumption and investment? So we started off with the ice curve. Uh, this was it that we had learned in equal to a seven. We modified it, we simplified it, we, and we ended up with this. F of the y equals to a plus g. And we added expectation in. Into it. I don't need to write this down, it's right here. And then the, we talked about the implications of adding expectation to the, uh, to the ice curve, which was effectively that the curve remains downward sloping, but this increases the slope of the curve, it becomes steeper. And so then we talked about why it would be steeper and the explanation was simple, is that uh, whenever there are government policies imposed, that can only affect the current period, but people are no longer worried simply about the current period, they're also worried about the future periods right now, expectations. As a result, any changes just to the current period will ultimately have a very little effect on the current period in time. So we talked about them here in part one and part two. Uh, then we talked about how expectation affects monetary policy. And we saw that as long as our monetary policy does not have an effect on expectation, the, the outcome of a monetary policy will be small. However, if monetary policy can lead to a change in expectation of firms, investors, and consumers, then the effect of monetary policy can be large. We saw that graphically here. Then we talked about fiscal policy. And uh, we looked that, at that uh, if government is imposing a fiscal policy, uh, we had learned that a contractionary fiscal policy will always shift the eyes to the left in equal to a seven, but that doesn't have to be the case. Some economists have argued that even in the short run, a fractionary fiscal policy may lead to a rise in income. And we talked about that here, is that when we bring expectation into the mix, uh, things are a bit more complex. And we talked about how, what are the factors that will determine whether ice shifts to the left or right. We've talked about this four points. So this effectively is the end of expectations. That also means that we have a quiz at the end of this week. Uh, good luck for that. And remember what I've said at, in one of the earlier videos is that when you guys are reading with the entire chapter. Okay. I'm, I'm only covering the important points, uh, but you are expected to read the entire chapters. Uh, so good luck with the quiz. Oh, and of course, in the next video, I'll be solving some problems. So see you guys there.